So hello there and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tanmay Bakshi and this time we're going to be covering locally remote push notifications in Swift 2. So to begin this tutorial we'll be covering something like simulating remote notifications using local notifications and an implementation of Swift databases. So this is going to be a part one in a part in a two part series that I'm going to be creating today. Okay, so part two will be coming up uh, soon. I'm currently working on it, but uh, so part one is here. So to begin, this is going to be the concept part of the video, uh, and I hope you enjoy. So to begin, what is a push notification? A push notification is essentially something like using parse uh, to send a notification to all or a specific group of your users, or specific groups of users. And now, what's a local notification? Well, let's say you want only one user locally to not connect to a server and get a notification, but let's just say every 24 hours get a standard notification, like that's a preset string. For example, if you have sort of like a racing game, then you'd want to say from the last open uh, time of this app, in the next 24 hours show notification saying, hey, you haven't come in a day. You might want to check out the app. Okay, so that's one example of a push notification, or a local notification, sorry. Now, now the parse is shut down, I mean, there are alternatives like Bluemix push notifications. However, today I have another method of simulating push notifications, also called remote notifications, using local notifications and Swift databases. So let's get right into it. So, let's begin with something that I'm sure you all know at this point. In all Swift databases series, we have a MySQL database. So I'm going to pretend that we have a MySQL database over here. All right, so now we have a MySQL database. Uh, and so let's just pretend that this is an object here. Now, uh, on the other side over here in the middle, we're going to have PHP. OK. Then next we have Swift, as you all know. And finally, we have the owner's device. All right. Now, I mean, technically, Swift runs under the device, but there is also a UI device class, I guess you could call it, in Swift uh, that you can use to do stuff like no local notifications. Now, how do we use all of these objects and local notifications to simulate remote notifications? Well, let me tell you right now. So to begin, we're going to add into our app, which is sort of like the container of Swift. So there's basically an app, and it contains Swift. So this is app, and it contains Swift. OK, and the device technically contains the app. OK, so now to the app, we're going to add something that I like to call the background execution. So I'm going to add the background execution ability. Oh, sorry. Ability. So essentially what this will do is if you go into the little uh, abilities tab in the Xcode info, uh, you will find something called background execution of, uh, or some of, something like that. Uh, and so basically, uh, we're going to add that in. Uh, and so basically this will allow the app to run in the background with a little daemon. Uh, and so what it's going to do is it's just going to keep checking if we have to display a notification. OK. And so what I'm just going to do is so that you know that this isn't, isn't a part of the device, so it's an extension to the app added by Xcode, to your app bundle ID specifically, but we'll talk about that later. OK, then now we have PHP and MySQL, which as you all know from my previous tutorials, can talk to and from each other. All right, that's normal. However, now what we're going to do is, you know, MySQL is, of course, a part of the admin. The admin controls what's inside of the MySQL database at all times. OK. And so let's say the admin were to add a notification.
And let's just say that it said, um, new version of this app is here. Okay, so let's just say this was the string that he sent into a MySQL table. Okay, so now what's going to happen is Swift is just constantly, every second, going over to PHP and asking for some information, which will then go through to MySQL, okay? MySQL gets the data, goes to PHP, sends it back, uh, and then from PHP it goes back to Swift and back here. And so now, Swift either has no, there's no new notification, or yes, there's a new notification, and here's its text, and here are any other special attributes we need to put along with the notification. Now, if Swift receives a notification, it's going to create a new local notification. Local notification. Okay, so it's created a new local notification, and it sends this local notification with some attributes over to the actually you know what technically so I'm not confusing you the UI device class and so it sends it over to the UI device class that's how that works and this is essentially an entire overview of how this app is gonna work so that's really all I had to explain in part one. So one more time recap, essentially what we're doing is we are simulating or creating our own little version of uh, essentially push notifications, simulating it using local notifications and a MySQL table which can tell Swift when to show a local notification. So that's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like. That's going to be it for this video. I'll meet you in the next part in which we will go in more in depth. And so if you'd like to contact me, please do at my email if you'd like, tajimani at gmail.com will be in the description, Twitter at tajimani, and finally, GitHub, uh, tanyabu123, and of course, you can always comment on this video. That's going to be it for uh, this part, and I hope you enjoyed. Uh, that's going to be it. Goodbye.